Hi everyone and welcome to a short presentation on low fat oil paint which we are covering on Thursday in class and I hope you're looking forward to it as much as I am. Here you can see in front of you a piece of cardboard and a piece of watercolour paper with little circles of paint and I've chosen Massini paint and I also have a real cheap and cheerful get in a sorted box from the supermarket red one here we are and that one obviously is going to be lots of oil in that we're, we're looking for a bigger drain on that one than we've got on the better paint we shall see so let's see what's been happening then on the cardboard it's obviously more absorbent so it's pulling that oil away from the color on the watercolor paper it's slower um, simply because it's tempered so to absorb at a slower rate so cardboard's your best bet now we're going to leave this for two hours to see what actually happens to it before we do let's have a closer look at what's happening here the red the cheaper pigment that oil is just falling away from it on the titanium white which is traditionally slightly creamier than a color pigment and so it's all behaving exactly how I would expect it to. I would recommend cardboard. I would not recommend watercolour paper. So here we are two hours later and look at what's happened. Wow, what a transformation. The oil has been drawn out of the paint. The paint is actually very dull and is really lacklustre now and quite chalky and in fact the, the red is more like soft fondant icing than paint so <clears throat> based on that you could buy cheaper paint drain the excess oil and you'll get better quality pigment to paint ratio so let's see how it performs on these surfaces on I'm sorry about the flickering I don't know what's happening here but on the, the rear surface the bigger piece of paper is Letraset Nun Bleed which is ideal for Sharpies and um, illustration techniques the next thing up is a, a quite a coarse heavyweight watercolor paper and then I also have a small 8 by 6 gessoed ready primed canvas here we go that's the canvas and I'm going to try these on all of the surfaces to see how they perform when we thin them down with turpentine into my thinner I don't know if you can see that I think it's off camera and then let's go into the cheek paint and I'm going to go straight away onto the nun bleed paper and it's exactly it's not doing anything so let's have another go on the watercolor paper <coughs> that's bleeding out as we would expect it to do and let's have a go on the canvas okay so as we can see that's quite Thin. Can you see the effects we're getting there? Let's just spread that out a little bit. Now I've just added a little bit more thinner there. Can you see on the watercolour when I do that it's absorbed straight away by the paper, it's not going anywhere. On the canvas, again, it's already there. Now as we all know, we put oil paint on, you can fiddle with it for hours normally. So the idea of this is it's great for your underpainting, do your underpainting the night before. So let's see how it blends, okay? So into the, the turpentine and we're going to go for, let's go for the golden green, eh? Okay, let's see what's going to make a mess, isn't it? Let's have a little go. I'm going to start halfway up there. Now that blends just like watercolour. So why not use watercolour, I can hear you say. Well, the reason we're not going to use watercolour is we may not want always a, a transparency. And we can go over the top of this with something a little bit thicker if we want to, to cover that up. 
Now I could, you would say, well, you could take your oil paint straight out the tube, not drain it and mix it with thinner. Why don't you not do that? Okay, so here we go. Let me find my oil paint. Go for this lovely blue, this delightful blue, okay? Straight out the tube. Okay, straight into the thinner. Bearing in mind this is the last thing I'm going to do and we'll see what happens. Okay, so we've got the oil, mixing it in with the thinner there. It's nice and sloshy. Let's see what this does. Okay, so let's go over here first. Now this is exactly what I did with the the first layers, I, I think I dipped it back in the thinner, so let's do that, let's be fair. Okay, what is the difference? Take your time. We've got drag, because although we've mixed thinner with it, we still have oil. And the oil will hang on to the surface you're painting on, it will cause the drag. Okay, think about spreading butter and think about spreading low-fat spread on a piece of bread. Exactly the same thing happens. If you use butter on one half and you use your low-fat spread on the other, you're going to have a lovely smooth covering with your low-fat spread, aren't you? Because there's no cling, no drag. With your butter, you've either got to melt it first or you'll still be there in 10 minutes' time trying to get a smooth finish. So. This is a perfect method for first layers, for underpainting, and even for our primer, because I'm sure, and I'm just about to find this out, because I have a curiosity. Now, can you see? Dry. Still slightly wet because it's sat on top of the canvas. Actually, for finger painting, that would be super. Look at those lovely effects that we're going to get. Beautiful. Dry. So on the two papers, they're immediately dry. Thank you so much for watching and sticking with me. I do hope you give this technique a go. It's marvellous for layering and glazing techniques. It's fabulous, absolutely super. Your layers dry really quickly and you are able to then build up far faster than layering with untreated paint full fat as we say take care thank you for watching god bless